Irene and welcome to my channel Living Around. Today I'm taking you with me to the largest, largest rooftop garden in Southeast Asia. We are at this shopping mall called Wan Yu or Wan Utama and sitting right above the shopping mall is the secret garden. And what's even more special is that we are joined by a renowned botanist, Dr. Francis Ng himself, who had designed this place to take us through the garden. So let's get started. Hey, Dr. Francis Ng. Hello. Oh, we still have a lot to shake hands. I don't know. Maybe it's from. Okay. It is so, so good for you to be with us in this episode. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, Irene. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dr. Francis L is a really famous botanist and I have a book from him that I have read religiously for the past three years, which taught me so much about the fundamentals of uh, plants. Like not only the ID, but how they grow, what condition and how they propagate them. Okay. So I'm a bit of a fan. <laughs> Later, I will ask you to autograph. Oh. <laughs> Maybe before we start, could you tell us a little bit about this garden? Okay, this garden, uh, the work began in about 2004. Oh, wow. Um, as soon as the uh, building was completed. Oh, okay. Um, actually, we started with the rainforest mm. down at the lower ground floor. Okay. And that rainforest was put up uh, within a few months of the opening of the complex. Ah. And uh, while we were planning for the rainforest, yeah. the owner of the property, um, Tan Sri Chiu, okay. uh, began to discuss with me what to do on the rooftop. Ah. And that was where the idea of a rooftop garden came in. Okay. I had at that time developed a new soil medium mm -hmm. based on charcoal. Oh, I'm uh, very interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and, and so we, were, uh, we, we had this new medium that was very lightweight mm -hmm. and had certain properties which uh, are much better than that of normal soil. Okay. <clears throat> so you see that we use that medium here, mm -hmm. so the soil is only that thick. Oh, about, wow. About uh, six to nine inches thick. Okay. <clears throat> and it can support all these plants. Wow. Uh, we will look at your secret recipe later. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but even then, um, although I was, uh, there was a new formulation. We, we started using it in the rainforest. Ah. And then we decided to use this here, but it was still quite new. Okay. And on top of that, uh, the idea of doing this on a rooftop, we hadn't done before. Mm. <clears throat> So it had to be very highly experimental. Oh, okay. So it took us about five years. Wow. Before we got it to a condition where we could open to the public. Five years. Five years. It shows that we need really a lot of patience in gardening. Yeah. And, and you see that uh, some of our uh, tall trees are already old. They are, they are, some of them to be replaced already. Oh, it's wow. It's less than 20 years. Okay. Um, I uh, rather rashly mm -hmm. uh, promised the owner that uh, we could grow temperate plants up here. Wow, okay. Uh, because uh, we had an air conditioning system okay. that generated cold water. Mm -hmm. And I thought we could use cold water to water the garden ah. and kind of cool down the, uh, the plants. Yes. But it didn't work okay. um, <clears throat> because the amount of water simply wasn't enough. Ah. So we could only water the garden for maybe five minutes for each patch we had to move. Okay. We couldn't water the whole garden. Okay. But we managed to grow mm -hmm. apples, pears, oranges, um, <laughs> peaches, plums. Wow. We grow all the temperate plants here. They grow. Did but, they fruit? But they didn't flower or fruit. Oh, okay. Because for that you needed something else which we didn't provide. What? We, they needed a... Well, we don't quite know exactly what they need, mm -hmm. but what the cold winter does mm -hmm. uh, is to, 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 to bring the temperatures down to zero. Okay. Maybe the plants need that, maybe not, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Because winter is a combination of many things. Yes. It's the cold temperature, mm -hmm. it's also the, uh, the short days. Okay. Very long nights. Yes. Um, and another thing that is very important mm -hmm. is the difference in temperature from day and night. Ah, um, to trigger that. 
flower. We, we, we do not know. We use the word winter mm -hmm. because winter means a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing as here. Mm -hmm. Now there are a lot of there are certain things that can grow in Cameron Highlands, mm -hmm. which are temperate. You can grow apples there. Yes. Uh, you can also grow a range of temperate flowers there. Yes. Which if I bring down here will not flower. Oh yeah, I have bought some of these plants in nurseries yeah. and then they don't flower they anymore. They don't flower down here. So yeah. it's not just the winter, there's something else. Okay. There's also the day length mm. and very importantly the night temperature. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm beginning to think because oh. the night temperatures in the lowlands here are very warm. Mm -hmm. So the plants that are used to temperate climates, yes. uh, they need nighttime cool so that they can uh, rest. Ah, and okay. here the nights are warm, the days are warm, they, have no, they cannot rest. They can't rest. Yeah, so they, they, they burn themselves out. Ah, okay. All so right. these are all speculative because when we talk about winter, you know, we think it's a simple thing, just yes. a cold. Uh, yeah. It's a complex of things. Too. So Dr. Francis Ng is a real scientist also. <laughs> you truly love plants and understand how they work, right? We try to understand yeah. this. There are a lot of things we don't know. Yeah, okay. So this garden is very much an experimental garden. Okay. Um, it's actually uh, the essence, it's actually a botanic garden. Ah, yeah. Actually, uh, I think KL, we don't really have a botanic garden. You don't garden. really have a botanic garden because you don't have any, sci any scientists running those gardens. Yes. So they just give a name botanic garden. This is the only true botanic garden apart from Penang. Wow. Where you have scientists in charge. Yes. And asking all these questions and yeah. trying to... Uh, find solutions. Yes, okay, great. Mm. Well, this part of the garden is the fun part. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are some people who think that this is the whole garden. Uh, they don't know that it is only a part of the garden. Ah, okay. Um, now, for the front part, we wanted to do something unusual. Mm -hmm. Now, a garden, any garden, any botanic garden, okay. is actually a, a combination of many different gardens. Yes. Uh, you cannot have just one big garden, it'd be very boring. Yeah. So you have different parts that do different things. Different sections. Yeah. Okay. So a botanic garden is often called a botanic gardens. Ah. Uh, so you will have a cactus part, you have a part for um, maybe a shade plants, yes. another part for sun plants, so yeah. we have to do this. Okay. So the part that we have developed here mm -hmm. uh, is the... Um, what I call the garden of architectural plants. Oh, okay. All these, all these plants have a specific shape and you cannot change the shape. Oh. Uh, most of the plants that we have mm -hmm. are plants like that. Mm -hmm. You can change the shape. Okay. This is, actually, this is a tall tree that can grow up to 100 feet tall. Oh, wow. Now, we have more or less bonsai this tree. Oh. Okay. okay. This, is a, this, is a, this is a forest tree. What tree is this, Doctor? Um, this is a, a plant, the scientific name uh, is called Iliocarpus. But anyway, uh, I've given it a common name here. Mm -hmm. I call it the uh, star flower. Okay. Uh, so the, yes. the, the flowers are very unusual. Yeah. So it comes from our rainforest. Okay. And we have kept it small and we have uh, uh, made the branches spread out ah. and we trim it. So okay. we intend to keep this small. Mm. Now this is unusual because uh, the rest of the plants here, I, I only put this here for, to contrast with okay. what uh, plants that you cannot do very much to shape. Now you can cut the top of this thing. Yeah, the palm tree, if you cut the top, it, it dies. Die. Yeah, most yeah. palm trees. I read that in your book. Yeah, so, so all these plants are plants that have a shape which you cannot really control. Okay. You cannot make a bonsai out of these plants. Ah, okay. Huh? Yeah. So these are called architectural plants. Mm -hmm. so and they're sun-loving plants too, I can see. Uh, most exposed. of these uh, architectural plants are sun-loving plants. Okay. Now the banana is an architectural plant. Oh, yeah, that banana, is that like a special dwarf banana or something? Yeah, this is the uh, a dwarf banana. The, um, is it Cavendish? This is the one of the originators of Cavendish. Ah, okay. The Cavendish is one of the uh, parental uh, strains. Cavendish is, uh, is a mixture of different genetic types. Uh. Okay. Yeah, the humble banana tree looks quite magnificent. Yeah, this <laughs> is uh, the, it's called the uh, Pisang Serendah. Ah. It's a short one. Okay. And there are many different varieties of this short one. Ah, I see. And mm. then there's uh, flowering too. Does it produce a uh, banana that you can actually eat? Uh, you can eat it. It's not very tasty. <laughs> uh, because the tasty ones are selected ones. Okay. So, but we grow this because uh, it's a nice short and... Uh, yeah, quite cute. Mm -hmm. 
So after flowering, it will, it will, it will, you have to cut down, another one will come the up. The babies, yeah. That's right. Okay. So here you get the idea of the architectural uh, contrast. Yes. And these are the agaves? Yes. Mm. So mm. they kind of need their own space around it for them to we stand have out. To, we have to... Sp um, part of the, gut, the, 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 the the challenge of gardening is, first of all, you have to choose plants that are attractive. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you have to display them in a manner that brings out their, their features. Okay. So for these things, we have to give them enough space mm. to develop the features. Okay. For other things, they don't need that space. We can, we can prune and cut and shape. Okay. Uh, these are the non-architectural plants. Ah, so then you can kind of clump them, you cluster them. You can clump them, them yeah. And, but then you have to keep on trimming them. Otherwise, okay. they'll get out of shape. Ah. The hair, we don't have to trim, but we have to make sure that they have enough space. Yeah, so otherwise, if they have too many things, you cannot see you the shape. You can't see the shape. And so the, the, the ground has to be kept so very low, mm. the ground cover. Huh? Okay. Now, incidentally, ground cover is very important. Okay. Because if I don't have the ground cover, the whole place will be filled up with weeds. I see. And it okay. will look very untidy. Mm. A lot of our time is spent pulling out the weeds okay. so that the, the floor is uniform. Mm. Okay? Right. Now, when you do another kind of garden, you see, I don't leave any room for weeds. Yes, yes. All very dense planting. Yes. So there is a white uh, a kantan. Uh, oh, this is a white. Oh, yes. Yes. Look. It's, a, it's a rather rare. Yeah, flower. because usually I see pink, uh, yes, pink color. Yes, that's the normal one. Ah, white kantan. Mm. Wow. Okay. Now, this is a, a plant that normally comes from a cold climate. Is that cle clementis? No, or? no. What? Um, gee, I uh, can't remember the name of it. <laughs> so I took this plant from Fraser's Hill, actually. Ah. And it's doing very well here. So it transitioned really well. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this is a different area. Yeah, these are still architectural plants, the biggest small ones. These are cacti um, and the succulents. Okay, I am quite amazed because uh, it tends to rain a lot, especially monsoon season. Yes. How, how do these cacti succulents can cope with so much water? Only a very small range will grow here. Oh, okay. Uh, because, the, 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 the water, because there's too much water. Mm. So uh, most of the cacti cannot grow here. These are the ones that uh, we tried and will survive. Ah, oh, okay. They're... So in, the, in gardening, uh, there's a lot of experimentation and mm. we cannot expect everything that we put in to grow. Some of them are just not possible. It's comforting to hear. I've killed quite a number of plants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every <laughs> successful garden are the survivors of uh, uh, are the surviving plants. Oh, you don't know how many have died. I know, that's true. <laughs> when I take photos, people will tell me, oh, what a wonderful garden, you have green thumb. I'm just thinking, because uh, I didn't show you the dead one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh. Um. I'll show you this bougainvillea. Ah, it's huge. Uh, which is one, which is one of the huge original bougainvilleas that came into Malaysia. Okay. And you know bougainvilleas in Malay, they're called bunga kertas. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know why they're called bunga kertas? It feels like paper? Because the flowers dry up, the flowers dry up and mm -hmm. become like tissue paper. Yeah. Uh, but they don't fall off. Ah. Oh. Uh, but the modern bougainvilleas don't behave like that, they fall off. Yeah, I was just thinking, actually your floor is uh, very clean. Uh -huh. That's unusual. Usually there's a lot of petals. Uh, oh, of... they've been swept. <laughs> they've been swept just yeah. before we filmed. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these, these, these flowers don't fall off. Mm -hmm. They will just uh, fade and then they will turn papery and they will hang on for, for months. Wow, okay. I know the one you're talking about, they tend to be uh, more vibrant, I think, the colours. It's vibrant when, it's, when, the, when the flowers are new. These are already old. Ah, okay. Uh, so it's already past the vibrant stage, but they'll still hang on for another, another couple of months. Okay. And they'll turn gradually whitish. Ah, so mm. this is the, the old school broken villa that's yes. more... Yes, it's a very big plant and uh, uh, used to be in the old colonial gardens. Yes. But now this is disappearing. That's true. It's no longer trendy and fashionable uh, <laughs> among the plant collectors. So we are, collectors. We, are, we are keeping two plants here. Okay. Whereas this one is a gardenia. Ah. Uh, which um, 
It's from Tahiti. Tahiti. Okay. Yes. Here's here's a here's a bigger flower. There's a fresh flower there. Ah. Yes. I only know gardenia as a loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have not seen the real plant. Mm. Wow. Okay. Mm. But this is so giant. This is a giant one. It's the biggest one I've seen. It, is it the, still the same um, It's the same type? genus, it's the uh, same genus? Film, but there are many different species. Ah, I this, see. This is one of the biggest ones. Oh, wow. Mm. This is like, I don't know, about 10 inches long, the flower. Yeah, yeah. All right. <gasps> My eyes see that wonderful uh -huh. looking tilansia under this tree. This is amazing. Oh, this is an air plant. Yeah. Tilansia. You have grown it so large. Mm. Do you remember how long this has been here? Oh, it's been here for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Wow. They're looking kind of like, uh, kind of mysterious. The form is very nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we actually lost quite a lot of them. We had more. Ah. Um, I'm not sure how to propagate this. That's true. If anybody knows how to propagate air plant, let us know. No, we, we, I haven't discovered how to do this. <laughs> when I find out, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Mm. So where should we go next? Um, well, we could... Uh, ah, hapus cancer more. This is a very uh, dangerous weed. Oh. So we have to remove all of them. Huh? Bila bila nampak mesti. Yeah. It looks quite pretty. It looks pretty, but it's terrible. It will spread right across the garden. It came in, it was not here before, but once it came, it took over, tried to take over the whole garden. Because we are about fifth floor up from the ground, are we? It must have come up with one of the potted plants. Ah, it, it, it looks like it will have flowers. You don't yeah, like yeah, it? Yeah, no, the flowers. No, it, it is a weed. <laughs> it will take over the whole garden. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, and this tree looks really something the flowers are like pink and fluffy yeah uh it puts out a big show when it's on today is um, when the rain kind of spoils it ah okay it's quite something hmm. do you have the name of this plant this is a species of caliandra caliandra i haven't got the exact species name the ah, many species from okay. south america oh okay uh, there you can see that. There, there are more flowers. Have, yeah. The whole tree should be covered with that. Here, look at that. Wow. Oh, and now we are at where the water, water lilies. Yes. Lotus. I have hardly ever seen them. Oh, those are the fruits. The fruits. Mm. Okay, I am not very familiar with edibles. Is this also an edible plant? Like we know we eat lotus roots. Yeah, now the lotus has been grown for the flowers and for the fruits mm -hmm. and for the, for the, for the tubers. Mm. And uh, there has been a process of selection. Mm -hmm. So the people who grow the lotus for the flowers, yeah. those varieties do not produce a fat tuber. Oh, not the ones we, we want to yeah. eat. No. The ones that we eat will normally not produce any flowers. Oh, I see. Okay. So they have been chosen for the, the tubers. The tubers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So maybe we come in a few weeks time, there will be in full yes. bloom. Yes. Now this lily would not normally flower in the lowlands. Yeah. Ah, but it's okay here. Wow. This is something I just see in the florist shop. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. Okay. Oh, I really like what you've done here with uh, the driftwood or pieces of wood and the orchids chucked in it. Yep. You designed this also? <laughs> in, a, in a sort of way, yes. Uh, we can only design up to a certain extent because we cannot... The, the plant has to be suited for the place. Yeah. So uh, we, we can only guess whether or not it will be suited. Okay. And if it doesn't work, then we change it. I like this because I'm a fan of collecting things from the roadside and I always collect pieces of wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then to put them together like this is very, very, looks very doable. Mm. I see you have uh, bromeliad orchids and I guess the fern just naturally grow on That's this. That's right, it came by itself. Yeah, okay, nice. That fern is a nuisance because it will, 
It will take over the whole place if it's not pulled out. Oh. Continuous. In fact, it's good to pull out once it's in there. Okay. Um, you realize that these are ferns too. This one? Yes. Yeah. That's a fern. Yeah. Um, and there is also a variant that's blue color I have seen. Hmm. Yeah, they are very unique and they kind of feel like succulent, like quite fat for a fern. No, there's a different one. Oh. There are many different types. Okay. The one that's round and succulent, they call do it, do it. Ah. That looks like a, like a, like a coin. Is that actually a parasite, the do it, do it? It officially is not a parasite. Officially, it's, a, it's an epiphyte. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clinging on to the roots. Yes. But um, I have, I have, people have noticed that all the old trees, moribund trees are covered with them. Yeah. So uh, they may not be entirely uh, harmless. Ah. Oh. Uh, they may actually harm the tree. Okay, yes. Because I have seen some of my tree, I was told it's better to pull them yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, even if they were not parasitic, mm -hmm. the, uh, the roots of these plants mm -hmm. may clog up, the, may, may, may prevent the, 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 the skin of the tree from breathing. Ah, I see. Mm. Okay. Oh, this, this thing really catches my eye too. What are these plants? These are from Madagascar. You can actually grow them in a shallow pond. Shallow so that they stand out above the water. Ah, okay. Mm. That was the original intention, but uh, we couldn't. Uh, the water in this part leaks out. But you have them in pretty wet, wet ground. Yeah. Pagaga. Pagaga is a nice covering. Yeah, we use the pagaga as a cover. Yeah, it's actually very cute, mm. very common here in this part of the world. And a nice water feature to give it that. Yes. Dam that it needs. There's a lot of calatheas. I'm impressed that you could grow them all outdoor. Mm -hmm. Because usually I find them quite fussy, the calatheas. Yes. They need the right com they like they need to have the light uh, light conditions. Mm -hmm. They're not really sun plants. Yeah. Uh, they need some shade. Mm -hmm. Um rather moist conditions. Yes. Mm. And then so the media here is uh pretty well draining as well. Yes. Oh, is this using that biochar you it were is. talking about? You can about? see that this is biochar. Okay. You can pick it up with your hands. Okay. So the small pieces. It looks like a very high percentage of Okay, I have to ask this, what's the difference between charcoal uh, and biochar? Oh charcoal is just um at, biochar is just charcoal. Okay, same um, thing. That has been uh, in small bits. Ah. But they, they, are, they are produced in many different ways mm -hmm. <coughs> and from many different plants. Okay. So uh, there are differences depending on what's the starting material. Ah. The, the normal charcoal that we, we get in the shop, yeah. that comes from the mangroves, those are bakau charcoal. Okay. Now that charcoal is very, very heavy and solid uh -huh. and very difficult to break up. Okay. So it's not suitable for biochar. Right. It will be a lot of work to try and break it up. Okay. Um, and why do we want them in smaller pieces broken up? So they behave like soil. Oh, okay. So the roots can go through. Yes. And then it has maximum surface area. Yes. So that it can uh, absorb water, nutrients, microbes. Okay. Mm. If you get one big chunk, then, you know, the, yeah. it, it's practically dead. So what are the source of this biochar? This is kind? comes from the, uh, it's a byproduct of the briquette industry. The what? Briquette. briquette. You know the charcoal briquettes that people buy in boxes? Yeah. They're all shaped. Yes. Standard size. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is processed the charcoal. Okay. It is made from sawdust. Oh. The sawdust compressed and then baked. I see. Uh, okay. So when that comes out, uh, many of the pieces are broken up. There are not many. A certain percentage will, will, be, will be broken. Uh -huh. So when they are broken, they are rejected. Ah. So they can be crushed and then used for this. Ah, so it's the rejected goods of that bricket. Yeah, yeah. And that's very, very yeah. good for the plants. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> is this mixed with other things? Oh, oh these are the leaves of the trees. So after, these are ten, after 10 years, all kinds of debris. Ah. You can mix up with it. 
Okay, just biochar and then with natural yeah. beans that's composed. Mm. Nice. Okay. They are, they are now, uh, they are my horticultural supplier supplies biochar now. Ah. Uh, there, there are people making it now. Okay. Uh, they make it out of bamboo and uh, so on. Ah. Because there is a, a small demand. Yes. Um, partly also to for the people who make activated carbon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So activated carbon is very high end, basically it's very expensive. Yes. So we will take the lower grade. Ah. Okay. Mm. Very helpful to know. Maybe yeah. our get some from you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this yeah. Yeah, in my blog I do tell you uh, where to get it from. Okay. Where people buy it from. Oh now we come to an Instagrammable spot here. It says this is the largest lily lily pad. Yeah oh no flowers today, sorry. <laughs> mm. This is uh, from what Amazon? It's from it's from the Amazon. Wow. I was told that in Malaysia there's only two spots in the Penang Garden and here only have this lily pads. There, 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 there may be others, so you don't know about them, uh, private oh. gardens. Okay. The, the, this has been in the country for nearly a hundred years already. Oh. Um, but, uh, you know, in private gardens, you cannot grow them in public gardens because um, they get attacked by all kinds of insects. Oh, okay. So they have to be protected, washed over. And, um, and this weeping willow, it this looks very nice next to this water feature. Yes. I have killed this tree, Doctor, because I think my area was too shady. You have to kill it for your own garden because the roots are very damaging. Oh, really? Yeah. we got a very fine root system and um, it will kill most other plants. Oh. So these are the plants that are able to live with it. Not many plants can. Oh. Okay, so it's a good thing uh, it did try. Because they would have killed my other plants. <laughs> it's very comforting to know. <laughs> they, will, they, they, will, they, will, they will take away all the moisture. Oh. It, it is not the true weeping willow. This is from Australia. Oh, okay. The true weeping willow is from China. Okay. Um, that is a willow. This is not a willow. This is a, what they call an Australian willow. Right. Mm. Oh, but it looks similar to the eye. Yeah, they, they behave just like that. Okay. Mm. Now, there is more of the garden. I think we've not even been through half. <laughs> uh, this is a very, very um, famous spot for the garden. Yes. I've seen a lot of people taking photos here mm. on their Instagram. <laughs> this is what we call the curtain ivy. Is this? Um, we, we, we call it uh, what? Uh, stringy scissors, but now I think people are calling it thousand roots. Thousand roots. Yeah, but of course. Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, scissors root stringy. Yes. Okay. Scissors is the, the name ah. of the plant. Now this is the bougainvillea again. Oh, bougainvillea, yes. Yeah. It's stunning. I hope they do, uh, they make a comeback because now people don't really grow bougainvillea as much. You see them turning into uh, tissue, thin, thin tissues that dry up. Yeah. So in dry weather, they will become crispy. Oh, okay. Mm. Do they have like seeds? What are these? No, no. Bougainvilleas don't produce seeds. Oh. They, all, all the bougainvilleas are hybrids. They are sterile. Oh, okay. okay. Mm. Oh, wait. I have to see. These are quite spectacular pops of orange. Yeah, that's right. It's from tropical America. Ahmad. Yeah. Uh, the jaga semua tempat ini ya. Ini pun boleh buang lah. Kita tak mahu ni. Ya, tapi ini yang mustahak dan mesti buang. Tengok mana -mana ada, you buang dia. Hmm. So Dr. Francis, you're still actively involved in the maintenance of the oh, garden? Oh yes, I come twice a week. Ah, oh, wow, that's hmm. dedication. So you're here at least once a week? Twice a week. Twice a week? Yes. Wow. So this plant requires a haircut then twice a week. I think the haircut is too straight, Doctor. <laughs> Don't worry, well, but in two days' time, they won't be straight anymore. <laughs> uh, they all come out like this. Now, the, the young roots are pink. Yeah, yes. Uh, so you have to keep on trimming them. Ah, I actually wanted this for my garden, but... Oh, don't do that. It'll take over your house. Oh. <laughs> you climb on your roof and you're done for after that. Yeah, yeah I heard they're very, very invasive. Very. <laughs> but they look kind of spectacular. <laughs> but I just don't have the space for it either. No, 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 you can't. Okay. Uh, so, warning, this looks great, the curtain ivy thing, but 
they can take over your space. <laughs> so think twice before you plant this. I think we're coming to my favorite area where the more shady plants are. Yes. These are begonias. These are begonias. It's Begon huge. And they're planted on the ground. Oh, yes, yes. I'm quite amazed because most of us, uh, they we're just planting them in pots and it's unusual to see them on the ground. It's the chaco. And this is so huge. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, it's the biggest begonia leaf I have ever seen. So we're about to enter in this, what do you call it? It's a, it's a, what? <coughs> a pergola. A, per, a pergola that's beautifully mm. creeped by uh, this rangoon flower. Yes. And uh, this unusual flower in the end. Oh yeah. That is so unusual. They look like they are crying. <laughs> and entering here feels like a magical wonderland. Do, I think people would shoot weddings here sometimes. Do um, no, they haven't done weddings here, but a lot of people do their proposals here. Their proposal? Yes. Okay, if you're thinking of making a proposal in a romantic spot. Serious, don't get trapped. <laughs> Oh yeah, because you can't run away, you have to say yes. <laughs> Girls, be careful. <laughs> Nowadays they have, uh, they have this uh, proposal parties that all gang of people show up there and then suddenly somebody pops the question. I know, they are like all ready with cameramen <laughs> yeah, and friends. That's right. So I think they are very confident the girl is going to have to say yes. Oh uh, yeah, they, they won't get a no. Yeah. <laughs> we have it on camera. Mm. Oh, this is still a bird nest friend or something else? It's another fern. Yeah, it looks similar and yet different. Mm. Okay. This is from our part of the oh, Yeah, world? yes, our is a native plant. Ah, okay. Mm. Yes. Here we are trying to create a kind of a hibiscus uh, walk. There are all these dangling hibiscus. Oh, this hibiscus looks like a lace. Yeah. I've never seen one so lacy. Oh, lantern hibiscus. These yeah, it's a lantern hibiscus. Hang on, they look like mm. we're in an arch. Yeah, yeah it's, it's designed to look like an arch. But uh, it's quite difficult to maintain because we have to keep, they, they want full sun, so we have to keep on cutting the top to make sure the sunlight penetrates. Ah, wow. Because once it gets too shady, they stop flowering. I think I'm starting to see your secret. There are little wire frames yes. that support it. Mm. To make it look like it's a, it's a tree. Yeah. This is a very good idea, guys. Whoops. So if you want like kind of a tree, but not a tree tree, you could make wire frames that looks like an umbrella. <laughs> and then they grow on it. Mm. Oh, my eye, eye is drawn to this tree. Or rather, it's a very clever way of making a tree. Mm using the the Lee Kuan Yew plant? Yes, correct. Yeah, wow. So, underneath, let's see the secret of doing this. Oh, it's really dark. I hope you can see. But if you can imagine an umbrella frame, this thing is what? Oh, a sample is right over here. So, it's kind of like an umbrella frame and then you grow your plant on top yeah. to achieve this look. Mm. <laughs> Two bird of paradise, uh, not, not open today, next week. Oh, I never realized they could flower in our Very difficult. climate. Only up here. Only up on the fifth floor yeah. of the shopping mall. Yeah. Because a lot of people uh, buy it, but it, it can't really it flower. And I noticed it's a little bit different. Mine is bigger, broader leaves. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are many different species. Ah. And it's impossible to propagate. If I try and pick it up and plant it, it'll die. Oh, okay. But I dare not touch this plant. Wow. <laughs> Wait, this is really, really lovely. Mm. Well, I have I have rarely seen this plant. Yeah. Where is it from, do you know? We will check from your book. <laughs> check from the book exactly. here. This is really nice and rarely found in nurseries. Yeah. I've been trying to look for them. There's another one that's even more rare inside there. Oh, wait, there's so many things to see. I want to point out this. 
ginger also because their blooms are so beautiful. I have this at home, but because they don't get enough sun, then therefore they don't have the <coughs> blooms we can see here. Oh wait, the hydrangea. That's another unusual plant to see flowers. This one flowers all the time here. All the time. Mm. Wow. I mean, this is amazing to be able to get it the flower in a tropical country. Mm. Do the colors change depending on the amount of sunlight it gets? Um, no. No. Not the, the, they, they will change according to the acidity of the soil. Oh. Mm. <coughs> wow, begonias on the floor. Mm. Oh. That is huge. And they seem so happy. <laughs> because begonias are known to be quite fussy plants. They are. And yet, in mm. your biochar, they are, they are very happy like mm. that. Wow! And look at the amount of begonia that's here. I think this is the begonia imperialis. Oh, this is really testing my ID knowledge. I don't know the ID of this or that. But just the sheer amount of begonia that's on the ground is amazing. This is like some dark lord. Oh, this is very pretty. Very Christmas-like, almost like snowflakes. Mm. Silvery. Oh, look at there. These red ones. Let's look at the condition they're in. Up to the sky, it's about 50% shade, doctor, is yes. it? Okay. Is it controlled watering? Like, do the rain can No, get... we, we, they're sprinklers. Ah, so the rain cannot come in. The through. rain does come in. It does come in. Yeah, yeah. But it's a bit managed mm. by also the shaded cloth. Wow. Oh, there is more, more of this that I, I really liked. Yeah. The one that I actually prefer is the other one. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That has got stripes. Would you say the contrast is greater when uh, it's shadier? Does it matter? Uh, they, they, they prefer the shade, actually. They prefer the shade? Mm. Oh, look at this one. It's really, really exotic looking. Look, doctor is still gardening while we shoot. <laughs> we cannot resist pulling the weeds. It's real dedication. This is one thing I'm trying to <clears throat> indoctrinate my gardeners. They have a very fatalistic attitude towards weeds. Oh, they, is this a they, weed also? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So oh. they, they, they think that weeds are, are natural, you can't do anything. Mm. And I'm trying to tell them that you know you eliminate them once and for all, they'll never be back. Okay. Oh, here. More, more weeds. So doctor don't like these weedy plants. Ah, oh, quite a lot of weeds. What is this thing? I've never seen this before. What's it doing here? Ah, oh, yeah, pull it out. Pull it out. I know where it came from. Track it down to where it came I didn't get the roots though, so there's more. Mm. So I can apply job here as a gardener. <laughs> I'm quite good at Pulling meat. Ah. You got it? Ah, yeah. It's really long. I think the origin is somewhere in oh, there. Oh dear. So we chuck this on the ground? Yep. I think he wants to do more weeding. Okay, this is another shade garden. See that weed is sticking out. Oh, oh. hey! Oh, you see the wheat, I see the uh, calathea. Yeah. <laughs> I think the problem with gardeners is when I look at my own garden also, I also tend to just see the problem. Yeah. I see a lot of work and problem. And then visitors come, they just go, wow, so nice. <laughs> How wonderful. You have green thumbs. Wow, okay. I have this, but they are not as pink. I wonder. Oh, you have to choose. 
Oh, you're, yeah, you're the buyer. Yeah. Let me find a chapter. Oh. You I thought because like I didn't give it enough sun and therefore they were not as pink. Mm. Oh, I have to ask you uh, this one, the Calam Calanthia or something. Ah, uh, Camphera. Camphera. Yeah. Some are, it's got this texture where some Ini is more green. Ini masih ada banyak uyo. Sini oh, dan sini, okay. ya ya. Yang memang belum apa ni? Ya ya, panggil dia ada orang buat tiap tiap hari lah. Okay okay. Dalam okay. satu bulan habis semua tambah lagi. Oh ya. Ya, dan nah, 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 semua mari ya, wah ya. dia bunga. Yang memang belum apa ada sama sama. Ya. Bagian sana. Ya, okay lah. Okay. Buat ini dulu lah yang mustahak. Ah okay okay. Hmm. Ya, okay. Oh yeah, I want to ask you. You have to uh, go to the nursery and search for this particular color that you want. Oh. Because everybody, they have many different shades you have to choose. Okay. And and then, where this is more contrast pattern versus that one, is it the amount of light or is It's the amount of light. So what, darker you get darker, more pattern? Darker, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, good They'll tip. You'll green in the sun. Okay, good tip. Good tip. <laughs> I now know how to bring out the patterns. When I buy flowers in a nursery, yeah. I, uh, you have to know that uh, every plant could potentially be different. Mm. Don't just go and say, I want to buy a rose, it'll be big trouble. <laughs> you have to know specifically, you have to see the flower. Yeah. Don't believe what they tell you. Okay. You see the flower yourself. Yeah. Um, and uh, don't just pick a plant, you know, because it all looks the same. Oh, okay. Uh, you you got to be careful of the differences. Yeah. Uh, the the for variegated plants, mm -hmm. you you want to make sure that you have the variegation. Oh oh yeah, you know nowadays, doctor people are so crazy about variegated plants. Yeah. And then once they revert to green, mm. all the money is gone. Oh yes. <laughs> now here in the garden, I need plants that flower in the day. Mm. Uh, plants that flower in the night, nobody can see. And when the flowers open in the day, I want them to open all day if possible. So when I look for morning glories, I go in the afternoon and look at the morning glory. Oh, if they already close, yeah. no. That's a really good tip. Uh -huh. You want your plants to work very hard. Yeah. <laughs> Bloom all day. Mm. Uh, this is so a rare plant. Beautiful. We don't have any, many plants with silvery leaves. Uh, yeah, this one caught uh, my eye when I came here a few days ago. Mm. Is it more a temperate plant? It's from the uh, United States. Yeah, okay, yes. It's very unusual color mm. for this part of the world. It's, um, it's called uh, cottonwood. Cottonwood. Mm. Mm. I just noticed you are using begonia kind of like as ground cover. Yeah, this particular one. <laughs> this one, uh, they yeah. go really vigorously, right? Uh, this, is, uh, this is the size. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they grow quite, quite fast. If you get the right conditions, they will ah, cover the ground. Okay. Lovely. I have this, but still in pots. And uh -huh. then <laughs> okay. I will try to put them on the ground. Okay, doctor, I have many heliconias, but mm. this one in particular, the sexy pink, I find that I, I cannot keep it alive. Is it more fussy? It, it needs a shady, shady place. It wants a shadier yeah, place. Yeah, shady, moist place. Oh. It's, it's, it's not as sun-loving as the others. Okay. It should work in my garden because I have yeah, a pretty shady shaded place. Shady place. Corner. Okay, so this is the sexy pink. It's <coughs> the only pink <coughs> heliconia that I know. And it's so vibrant, the colors. So now we know this one needs a little bit more uh, shade than the normal ones. <gasps> this is a huge amount of gloriousum. Wow. This is another, another, another species. It's ovate shape rather than... Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at the glorious sun, but doctor here is observing the... Another fern. Another f fern? Yes. This is not the do it, do it one. It's another it? form, but oh. not the do it, do it. It's a different shape. But you reckon they are both could be bad for the tree and... Yeah. Should take it out. Because of the, because of the way the roots form such a, a mat. Mm -hmm. So they cling to the bark and then... They clog up all the breathing holes. The breathing holes? In the bark. Okay, so if you have this, although they're very cute, it's a good idea to get rid of it because mm. they cover up the holes where the, the trees need to breathe. So do get rid of this in your garden. Yeah. Yeah, I checked it here. You got the, 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 this is the skin of the bark of the tree. Mm. So people don't realize that uh, it has to breathe as well. 
Okay, yeah, I never realized the bark of a tree needs to breathe. Yes. If you under examine the bark under a microscope, you find that they're holes. Oh. I only know that for the leaves, for the roots, they need to breathe, but okay, mm. the bark. Mm. Okay, good to know. All right, let's go around. There is so much more to see, and my camera is running out of storage space. Mm. <laughs> so I don't know how much more we could film. Ah, there's a, there's a bunch of fruits there. Ah, mm. I see one over there. Yeah. Here. Yeah, there's a big bunch there. Oh, yes, more over here. Down here. Oh, yes. Okay, I really did not imagine we can grow avocado in this weather. Oh, we can. Actually, I, I sell avocado trees oh. for my garden. Okay, so if people are looking for avocado trees, can look for you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because they are quite expensive to, to buy in the supermarket. Yes. And very healthy. Okay. My eyes are more attracted to foliage, so I can see you have alocasia growing happily on the ground. I struggle to keep some alive, I find oh. it quite fussy. Uh -huh. the, uh, the, my favourite alocasia is this one. The, ah. It has a velvety look. Yes, this one. Also, I have killed this before, but lately I see some Popping out, out of nowhere. I think from the soil that I threw away, they have uh, some yeah. bulbs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this really prominent line, nice veins. It's a plant that that wants to choose its own space. If you plant it, it may not work. Ah, uh, yeah. If it will come up by itself, it looks better. <laughs> Maybe I could try. Okay, this is under shaded condition yes. also. Do you do controlled watering for this area? They are, they, are, they are controlled. But, like uh, every day? Yeah, it's watered every day. Alocasia is underground, water every day. And you say you only have about six inches of soil? Yeah. That's quite amazing. Okay. Oh, that that tree. Yeah, that's the... I think they call it Tampoi Belimbing. Tampoi? Belimbing. Okay, so I will try one. I've never eaten this before, I'm not sure. Organic, yeah, no pesticide. <laughs> yeah, no, no pesticide, nothing. Actually, I don't know how to open this. Oh! You gotta break it in half, maybe use your teeth. Oh, I have to use my teeth. It's sour. Mmm. Gee, Miss Sarawakian tastes her native fruit for the first time. I, yeah, I'm from Sarawak, and apparently this tree is fruit is from Sarawak. Mmm! Mmm, it's sour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you have this in your country too, let me know. I hear you also have this in the in the Philippines. Thank you so much, Dr. Oh, for the autograph. Name. Yep, I hope you enjoyed. Yes, and uh, thank you so much. Also, you are giving away one book to a viewer. So viewers, go to the description below to see how you can win a copy of this book. You can do so by leaving any comment on this video. And um, so, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Francis. You're welcome, Ari. And I wish uh, you would come to visit my garden one day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So, bye-bye to bye. our next video. Remember to click subscribe and share with others. Bye. <laughs>